Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. And this episode we are going to reattempt the sample return mission and also the crewed lunar flyby mission. But before we get to that, we have a lot of science to spend and we should take a look at the tech tree as a result. Um, I suppose since we're in 1966 we should uh, plug away at the orbital rocketry here. Um, what I actually want out of this is a good question. Um, maybe the advanced AJ-10s? I gotta say, uh, no nothing up to 1966 is particularly wonderful. Um, if we could get the uh, 1967 rocketry without the 1963, 1964, 1965, and 1966, it'd probably do just fine. I don't recall the E1 being necessary along the way. AJ-10 is. Uh, these upgrades, probably not really necessary. KTDU-35, meh. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it's pretty meh. So, I don't know. Yeah, not the most inspiring length of time down here. I figure that some of these could be cut down by a few. We could probably scrunch them into maybe two different technologies would be fine. But, oh well. Uh, stage combustion, on the other hand, is far more promising. Uh, we get the proton engines here. Yeah, I maybe we should just skip this. I mean, if you got 60 science to spend, what would you rather spend it on? The proton engines or this? Uh, pretty much all of that's got to be outclassed by the stage combustion engines. And if the stage combustion engines are got to take the same research, then I don't see... Why, this... Uh, uh, there's no entry cost? That's that's great. Um, why? <laughs> why is there no entry cost on these? I feel like I'm, I may be missing some of the important things in RP1 or something, because, I, I, you know, there ought to be an entry cost to these, right? Right? I mean, eventually we're going to need this Lunar Exploration Era Materials Science to unlock... Uh, no, uh, yes, to unlock lunar landing. Oh, geez. Well, this is a uh, rub. They want 1967 to 1968 orbital rocketry to unlock lunar landing. Why can't I just have 1967, 1968 stage combustion or, or 1969 stage combustion? There should be an alternative because uh, this has got to be annoying. So you're saying I have to unlock these atrocious engines. Well, whatever. <sighs> spending all my science on stuff I don't want. Okay. Well, there we are. At least they're not requiring SRBs. I want interplanetary area science. That's a good thing. More science, the better. Before I spend any more, I think I should just start the R&D building upgrade. Probably we'll want some of the higher technologies even before we unlock the lower ones. I don't want to necessarily fill up everything at the base there. Though the probe cores are tempting. So I'm going to start this upgrade even though we have um, liabilities. Uh, not that many actually. Uh, well, I mean there is this one. Uh, but if you sum up the liability on this one and this one, it won't kill the space program. So we might as well get the R&D building upgrade started. And if we do that, I mean, we're expecting some more science, of course. But, you know, just in principle, I think, uh, let's say we're going to save enough for improved Hydrolox engines. I like, I like the J2. I really like the J2. All right, we'll do that too. So now we've got some upgrade points. And we've got a lot of research pending, so I think the thing to do will be to uh, pour it all on our science. We'll hold off on anything more until we get something done. Hopefully this episode will do that, but it'll depend on a number of factors. Uh, me and test flight, basically. So, let's try that sample return mission again for a warm-up. Okay, so here we go. We are testing a new engine with this launch, the NK9V. So... You know, we're collecting data units one way or another. Uh, we're almost maxed out on the RD-58. 
Um, the AJ10-104 has some more work to be done on it. But, um, well, here we go. We'll see what happens. Hopefully we can get there properly this time and I don't mess up as well. So, ignition. And launch. Oh, I keep forgetting the stupid avionics. Uh, you know, it used to be that the avionics had a warning, you know, a, a, a constantly visible warning. And so I wouldn't mess that up. Uh, but now it's one of the tabs in that window with the tooling and the other things. And I always forget to check it. I wish it was just constantly up like it used to be. I got used to that. And the thing about the way it used to be is it wouldn't show up unless there was a problem kind of thing. Or at least you didn't notice it unless there was a problem. So because I don't see it anymore, I think, okay, everything's all right. And I keep forgetting to fix this one. I mean, most of the time I get it right, but um, because it's because we put these side pods on. Right now, all we only have enough avionics for the core. This is sort of an adapted mission here. Okay, separation. Nope. <laughs> oh, heck. Well, that's a great debut, isn't it? Alright, uh, fairing separation. Well, I guess we'll give the other engines some work, huh? Alright. So yeah, I'm not gonna transfer to the moon. It's too much trouble since the mission can't do anything now. Uh, what I'll try and do is recover this little capsule bit. And we'll actually probably use this... Well, we'll see. Okay, well, we'll try a separate ignition. Heck, let's do a boost back. <laughs> of some kind. Might as well arm the parachute now. I wonder what would happen if I used the rest of the fuel up here to also retro burn. So I'll be a uh, sort of quick descent. Which would suit me, I don't want to wait waste time here. I want to get it done. Well, now the AJ-10 worked. It's one engine or another. Wait till we get the J-2. The thing about the J-2 is it can take the place of more than one of these stages. Like it could be the NK-9V plus the RD-58. Okay, 5,000 is going to be pretty harsh, but there's no Kerbal on board, so it's fine. Let's shut down, uh, turn normal, separate that off, and then prepare to come down. G-Force time. Let's see how many Gs we pull. This is like an abort scenario kind of thing. If you're on the second second stage of something. So how much was that? 22 G's. 22 G's. Okay, well the landing's gotta be a bit harsh, but probably that means that the heat shield is gonna blow up. Fairly typical. Ooh. Actually, we, we kept the heat shield. That's amazing. Ow, ow, okay, okay, okay. Oh, water. Maybe it's because of the water that we kept the heat shield. Yeah, maybe we landed on land previous times, I don't know, I don't remember. Okay, well, we're gonna have to try that again. <laughs> but maybe first the lunar flyby. Crew lunar flyby. Just checking out contracts, I think I'll pick up this Mars orbit contract and also this Mars atmospheric probe contract. It gives us uh, four years to do it and well of course there aren't too many transfer windows in that time but um, yeah I think we'll uh, give it a go uh, the failure is not too bad on it and the completion is very lucrative so 
it's probably a good idea. The atmospheric probe, we'll see. That all depends on communication. But we certainly have rockets capable of doing it. Also, before we get to do our crewed lunar flyby mission, we have to take care of this Mars probe approaching Mars. It's entering the SOI in 21 minutes. And I've decided to turn off signal delay. I was convinced to do so. Um, I, I mean, I can work around it, but it is probably just going to delay stuff in the videos. I mean, it's just going to take a little bit longer to do everything. So if you want more videos, probably turning it off is a better idea. So we get more stuff done in each video. So anyway, here we go. We've got a good periapsis, though we don't even have a flyby contract right now. And we don't have enough delta V for orbit. Though, uh, well, unfortunately, the atmospheric probe one, I bet, uh, well, no, it doesn't say that it needs a new vehicle. Hmm. Well, I mean, we could try it out, right? I mean, let's see. Can we uh, get closer to Mars? It says 50 kilometers. It gets pretty hot at 50 kilometers. And we don't have any ablator. Well, um, we do have communication back, so we're okay, actually. And I would like to be more convincingly below 50 kilometers if possible. We're already in the atmosphere. Uh, uh, dish side first seems like a, we're actually, I don't know where we're going. Sideways? I don't know. Oh, everything's blowing up, everything's blowing up, everything's blowing up. Or... Yeah, things things are going bad. Okay, that was quick. All right, so we'll need a heat shield for the atmospheric probe thing. Fortunately, this was a redundant probe anyway, so we could have gotten a little bit of science, but we're already turning on a lot of science, and our next transfer window to Mars is like in 200 days, so it's all right. It was a worthy test to run. Um, yep. Though some of these numbers are a little bit suspicious, like the solar panel that, uh, I mean, the ones that overheated at 1,119, that makes sense, you know, uh, that's fine. The ones that overheated at 9,900 and 10,900, I wonder if an extra zero got thrown in. Yeah, some of that's a little bit suspicious. I mean, it was going to get hot, but I don't think it was going to get that hot. It would have exploded long before that anyway, right? Hmm, some of this stuff, sometimes. Anyway, back to Space Center. Okay, I think I need to restart the game. Uh, Philby's on the launch pad with the rocket. I don't know, maybe we could launch, but this is highly irregular. Uh, normally, the scatterer issues stop when you finally bring the thing out to the launch pad but this might be more than a scatterer issue because we've got some transparency it looks like half of the normals are opposite of what they ought to be i don't know what the heck is going on right now yep this is highly regular at least the rocket didn't explode when it loaded but mm, i hope it's gonna be all right after i restart the game i've never seen this before Disappearing rocket, disappearing launch pad, well, disappeared launch pad, and apparently water around here. This is serious. Okay, well, I've restarted, and it looks like scatterer is okay. I don't know if it was scatterer causing the problem, mind you. It doesn't usually do that, but Philby's there. I don't know what's going to happen when we try and fly it, though. Let's see. Okay, it's looking safe. I'm gonna figure out the right timing to the moon. Okay, it's a daylight launch. Good times. Throttle up. SAS on. And ignition. And launch. Okay, we are off.
I did add the extra controller to the sample return mission, so now it has proper avionics finally. I did not forget this time. The NK9V is still going to be a bit of a problem. I considered switching back to the LR105 since it's more reliable, but we'll give it one more go. Now you might wonder why I didn't make these side things just boosters that drop off. And the primary reason is that these Juno tanks don't attach that way. They don't they they only stack attach. So it's a little bit complicated. Technically, it's the nose cone that's attached to the body of this, and the Juno tank is stack attached to the nose cone. It's just a little bit awkward to decouple it off of the launcher. I mean, it's not impossible or anything. It's just a little bit awkward, and I didn't think there was that much benefit to it. Not yet, anyway. But basically, the decoupler would have to go on the nose cone and be down and I have to do more testing to figure out whether that's a good thing or not. And you know, I don't do testing outside of the launches I show in the videos, so that, I mean, that sort of thing really does require more simulation uh, to see if the boosters can decouple properly. Okay, LR-105. So often, our savior, please do not fill us now. We're a little bit high up, but uh, everything else is nominal. We're oh, beyond halfway through this burn. Now, as expected, this stage is not going to bring us all the way to orbit. We are going to be using the RD-58 to complete orbit. It does occur to me that I forgot to shut some engines down during launch so we actually had pretty high g-forces huh okay is this engine okay yeah all right ignition what were our g-forces ooh nine g's just wasn't paying attention to that i did a bad thing I was supposed to shut down four of those engines. Okay, that's good enough. Alright, let's get these solar panels extended. Okay, I've got a free return plotted. We've got uh, periapsis under 5,000 kilometers, which is what we need. And basically a three-day trip there. And then over on this side, temporarily our periapsis is 91 kilometers. So that's pretty good. So, yep, I think we can definitely work with that. But we have to wait an hour around here. So, here we go. But I doubt boil off is going to be a huge issue. That total delta V is, of course, sub subtracting the one kilonewton thruster at the top. Uh, the planet is looking weird again. It's mostly transparent. I don't like the whole transparency thing. That's not good. It's practically a flat Earth right now. Look at that. Hmm. Very suspicious. Very suspicious. Sometimes it does stuff like this when you switch to a different vessel and come back to this. Maybe it's because I switched to it on the launch pad after I restarted maybe I don't know okay selling the fuel down and ignition it lit <laughs> not a trivial thing okay and shut down all right let's take a look at the situation got two ends to consider here so it's lifting up the moon periapsis and bringing down the earth periapsis but that'll basically do the trick right there 61 62 kilometers on the earth side 4255 kilometers on the moon side I don't know why those numbers are changing when 
we don't have any thrust, but okay. Uh, we'll add this tag along. It should have MLI on it, so it should be insulated, but we'll see what the boil off actually is. It still has boil off. And we don't need to free up the one kilonewton thruster just yet until we need it. As far as how much delta V we actually have, um, we could make orbit, but we wouldn't be able to get back. We have about uh, 813 meters per second. We're not going to get low over the moon. So probably nothing new. I don't think the EVA report is surface bound dependent. I guess I might as well check a few things. Crew report? No. I guess we might as well give it a go. EVA report? Nope. Nope. High over the moon. Not biome specific. Okay. Well, let us proceed. Let's just do the thing. How's boil off been? We haven't had any... Yeah, I don't really see that we've had any. It says it's boiling off, but it hasn't really been boiling off. Interesting. The MLI is doing its thing. And we've checkmarked fly by the moon within 5,000 kilometers. So now we just need to get our Kerbal back home safely. It's always a trick, isn't it? I'm gonna go with 62 kilometers. I think that might be sufficient. We'll see. We're looking good on supplies and everything overall. Phil V. Kerman, our intrepid Kerbinaut. Our valiant Kerbinaut, even. Well, I suppose we can try and make the situation a bit gentler here. And I want to give this engine one more ignition to get as many, as many data points. Well, we've sort of maxed it out, but we'll see. Okay, um, is that all settled? All right, engage. Okay. Well, let's dump the service module. Okay, nose cone. Right, and let's back away from the nose cone. <laughs> Okay, and then service module. Oh no, don't come back. Oh, it doesn't matter, probably. It's gonna hit the service module, which we're dumping anyway. Ooh, not the, not the capsule, though. Okay, the service module cleared off the nose cone, sort of. One thruster, and that service module off. Okay, we're good. Now, let's see. I'm sort of dumping the fuel as well. I don't really need it to be heavy up here. Descent mode on. Parachutes armed. Okay, turning off pitch control. Okay, preparing to hang out at this level. Okay, I think it's time to roll back. Possibly should have done that a little bit earlier. We're once again sort of hanging out at this altitude, 49 kilometers. Very nice. And I can't really check the peak g-forces because we had that issue on launch where I didn't shut down the engines, so... So yeah, it's not gonna read, but it seemed to be no more than 6 G's, which was more than I needed. I should have rolled around a little bit earlier. And we have deployment. We got a crude duration record as well, 7 days. Just waiting to return, return home safely here. Does that mean the other mission must have been less than seven days? That's interesting. The one that didn't quite make it on the required lunar flyby.
Okay, and recover. Okay, well, trivial bit of science, but the important bit is Philby is back. No new uh, XP gain because basically did the whole thing before. Uh, that that seemed like a long time. Hold on. Oh, I, I didn't quite catch how long Phil V would be out. Is that in here? Recovering. Yeah, wow. On that mission for that mission, Phil V is out for eleven months. Well, ten and a half months. But that's interesting. Is it related to how much money they make in the contract or something? I don't know what it's... Because, I mean, you know, we sent him basically on the same trip before and he was back in a week. Uh, so now he's out for 11 months. I guess it must be related to the contract fulfillment. That's the only difference, really. Uh, speaking of which, we did fulfill the contract. Got another cool million there. And reduced our liabilities. So... Uh, all we have to do now is lunar landing and Mars atmospheric probe and Mars orbit, but that's a separate thing. Uh, lunar landing, not even lunar sample return, mind you, because we've never succeeded. I didn't want to pick up the contract. Boy, do we have a lot of new contracts now. Mercury flyby, um, Jupiter flyby, all the flybys. Ferry, three tourists to Valiant, Titania. How could we ferry them? To it we recovered it that's that's the capsule we just recovered i don't understand i mean it doesn't say valiant dash titania probe in which case it would be some leftover bit that we have crude lunar orbit well should we pick that up now or wait a little bit uh well, time's a wasting. I mean, in two years, it'll be 1968, June 1968. So we should probably pick it up now. And let's spend some of our funds. I would like that technology to happen much faster. Oh, so the R&D building should be built faster. Probably that's the VAB build points. I don't know. We do still have to save some for the next R&D building upgrade. Okay, 1.75 first. And let me get some of these build points here. We should, I guess, upgrade the VAB so we get a second build slot. That's potentially better than just adding build points here. It depends on how the build slots work these days. Okay, I mean, this seems like less than a year worth of uh, research right now, so I think we, we're going at a pretty good speed. Let's see, VAB upgrade a million? Yeah, sure, why not? Facility upgrade, upgrade requested, and that'll be done in about 100 days. They can do, be done concurrently. And just checking out our liabilities. We've got 1.62 million there, uh, 1.82 million. 2.2 million, let's uh, 2.02 million, 2.3 million. So let's just call it an even 3 million and we can still spend some money. Though, of course, we still have to be able to launch stuff. I don't think I need to upgrade the tracking station yet. Wish Kerbals got cheaper when you upgrade. I guess maybe we should invest in more Kerbals. We've only got two Phil V and Naki or Nake. We've lost these because they retired. So yeah, uh, Chadnard. Yes. Uh, uh, Chadnard has high stupidity though. Daffri seems to be a uh, good catch. Uh, lots of courage, low stupidity. Philippe. Philippe. We must get Philippe. Must get Philippe. Lukey. Lukey. Yes, uh, well, I mean, do we want a scientist at this stage in the game? Hmm. Kathban. I don't know the practical use of engineers at this stage either. No, let's not overspend on them. Two, two is enough for now. 
Okay, we're trying the Sapper return mission again, and hopefully it'll work out as well as the crude lunar flyby, finally. Uh, throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. And launch. Oh, another reason why I don't make these side pods boost separating boosters is because they probably run out too quickly. And it's better that they are feeding from fuel in the main tank as well. Forgot about that aspect of it. Still, I could manually shut down the engines and separate them off uh, when I felt like they were done. If we uh, set the fuel priority to these Juno tanks to be first to empty, so it really is down to the decoupler issue and the fact that the Juno tanks don't surface attach. Okay, separation. And we've got a functional NK9V, at least initially. <laughs> Let's not jump the gun. Uh, fairings can be separated. Okay. And why don't I tune the antennae now? Okay, we are about to make orbit. It actually did the entire burn this time. And shut down a 202 by 161, which is fine. And separation. RCS on and forward. And we are clear. No problems. Let's spot for the moon. Well, this time we don't need any free return shenanigans or anything like that. This is probably Oceanus Procellarum, like we keep, we keep uh, hitting that. And probably the situation will change somewhat as we get there, though. But yeah, let's let's wait until we do the burn to figure things out. This is good enough for now. All right, 45 minutes, and ignition. All right, the RD-58 did ignite. Tough thing about this mission is how many engines we've got involved. We've got the NK-9V, we've got the RD-58, we've got the AJ-10. The crewed mission, the crewed flyby mission is simpler because really with the LR-105 being uh, fairly reliable, we're mainly wondering about the RD-58 on that mission, and there's no AJ-10. Okay, that burn was good, and we're finishing it off with the RCS here. I don't know if it'll provide quite enough, but then again we can move on to the AJ-10 with its infinite, it, well, in theory infinite ignitions if it doesn't mess up. Um, so yeah, but it's still all gonna be very tight. This might all be more efficient with the RL-10, but that costs a lot. We have unlocked the technology for it, but the unlock cost is pretty darn expensive. So then again, we do now have quite a lot of money. So we can think about that, but I'd rather just wait until we get the uh, J2. I'm not a big fan of the early RL-10s anyway. They're not very reliable. Oh, 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 the AJ-10 was a little bit friskier than I thought. Oh, no, 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 don't turn around, don't turn around, it's fine. Oh, yeah, I don't have any thrusters facing this direction, huh? I may want to reconsider this thruster arrangement. Especially when the AJ-10 is active. Uh-oh. Ah. I tried to push it too much. It's failed. I shouldn't have tried the multiple ignition thing. Ah, shucks. I still haven't fixed the thing where we can't really pump down fuel. Ah. Uh, I just need to abandon the AJ-10 altogether. It's just not worth it.
The RD58 is doing better. The AJ10, if anything, is doing worse these days. I mean, technically our contract is just to land on the moon right now. I said that last time and I didn't do so well. Okay, well, we are on a crash course. That's good. At least, I think it's good. But are we on a crash course that the landing location will face the Earth? Not really. Okay, I've probably overdone the corrections. But let's see what we can do. Tough thing about the direct approach is you can't rely on the suicide burn countdown very well. But basically, as long as the suicide burn countdown is ticking towards zero faster than time to land is ticking towards zero, it's probably okay, maybe. So we don't have any, enough delta V in this stage, but this delta V reading isn't including the RCS at the top because it's just RCS thrusters. But again, we're going to have to flip around, and that's going to be a dodgy business altogether anyway. Hmm. However, I do know that uh, delta V we have up here is not a whole lot. It's probably around 400, which if you take a look at the surface velocity and subtract out the stage delta V, that's, uh, I don't know, that's pretty close. And it's getting worse. Once the stage goes out, I'll just directly decouple the heat shield. So I'll get rid of the rest. Though I guess the impulse from the decoupling here might be a good thing to have. I guess we'll do that. Okay, and decouple. Alright, that's all good. Uh, now we have to flip around really quickly. And apply thrust in this direction. Oh no, we're not going to have enough time. And it, because I'm using the RCS for thrust, it can't control itself very well. Oh well, litho braking it is. Maybe I should just land another lander on the moon and skip the old sample return thing, though it is lucrative. Or maybe just build a better mission. There are options. Yeah, okay. I, I've had enough with this sample return mission thing. I'll have to come up with something completely different next time. There's no way I'm going to do this again. Alright, well, on that unfortunate note, despite our great success with the crude lunar flyby, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.